Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a happy uh, Saturday morning. Yes, happy Saturday morning. Happy three-day weekend to the U.S. citizens out there, and happy just regular weekend to, the, to all the other people out there. I believe it's like Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, holiday on Monday, so you know what that means. It means we're about to pump, baby, because everyone's going to start reading that I Have a Dream speech, and then you know what? Bitcoin. There you go. Anyways, over here into the live scene, and Bitcoin has very, speaking of Bitcoin, done very little in the uh, in the overnight session. But the higher time frames have given us a little bit of resolution. We've closed the daily, two day, and three day in the last uh, what was it like four or five, six hours, whatever it might be. So we do have a few things to, p to talk about. As with Bitcoin doing very little, it has actually you know ticked off a few scenarios. Anyways, on the daily right over here, as long as we're below all these major moving averages, especially the ten simple, I can't be bullish. Um, now, of course, this is a consolidation, and uh, as long as we're being governed by this red 10 simple moving average, which is currently coming in around 36.11, I uh, well, I will be using that as as essentially a, go a governing factor in taking trades off that. Just a little bit of a risk reward opportunity doesn't mean it's going to always work out. The lower time frames will shed some light on that. And realistically, I never put in trades on the weekend to begin with. But if it does open up like this, you know, late Sunday or, or, or especially early Monday, then I would be happy to take a trade off this. But we are starting to get that divergence between the red 10 simple moving average and the yellow 21x bench moving average. That is important to me. I do have a video up on that on in the uh, technical indicators and strategy section. So as those start to gain more and more momentum away from each other, think of it as like a MACD histogram, basically telling you that the that the momentum of, of, of the downside is actually taking over a little bit, you know, more by more and as we are in a consolidation period right over here that is a little bit of an insight of where the of what it's a little bit more likely to do now of course when you're consolidating price action first price action always first price action and volume essentially one in the same um when we're looking at consolidation periods so looking at this guy right over here uh yeah we can look at all of the you know all of the what's it called all, all of the indicators all of the you know secret sauces but at the end of the day that's going to come first just price action and volume we'll get to the lower time frames just a second but i do want to go over and cover the higher time frames first things first so daily right over here we still got our stokes uh headed up a little bit of a weak turn but we are getting out of the critical zone um adx dmi actually the adx is starting to signal a trend beginning but we don't really have any dominant trend i mean if if you were to say one it would be the it would be the dmi minus right however it's it's well below the signal line so i don't really consider that anything you can just it's really just more consolidation in the way that this was right over here uh daily rsi is give is still trending below the exponential still in the bearish control zone but it's really fighting it right over here again overall the consolidation a bearish consolidation uh, oscillating between the very low end and that, or sorry, the very the very low end of the bearish control zone, and then also the neutral zone right over here. Um, overall, price action very corrective, but just because it's a corrective price action doesn't mean it has to like you know it doesn't mean it's always going to turn down off of an area. You know, obviously this area over here did break to the upside, no doubt about that. But that does lead us into our other higher time frames, the two day right over here, which is what I'm really uh, waiting for. Two day dollar time frame, as long as we are closing two day dollars below this 3690 uh, ish area right over here, basically the basically the local low of this guy, I am bearish. Now we did just print a doji ish dildo on very low volume. Doji ish dildo is typically a sign of indecision, perhaps even reversal. However, when it's this low volume and you don't have follow through, then it doesn't really mean shit. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's just like this guy right over here. We're just getting a lot of indecision in a row. And that's that's essentially what we should be getting right now. Um, uh, two day also is right over here. We did get a new take last night. And this is what I was looking for. The two day stokes are still gaining momentum and heading deep into the bearish control zone. Now, as you can see, they're widened up uh, away from each other quite severely, actually. Uh, D two day T uh, DMI ADX. The ADX is signaling even uh, the, the trend beginning once again, although I would <laughs> not necessarily agree with the price action on that one. Uh, DMI minus still the dominant trend. So again, another, another point in the bearish court, we do have jewel not really saying too much right over there, except that we actually probably will be stepping into some support. Um, if, if it were to take a little bit of a nosedive three day, right over here, three days, three days, very interesting to me as well. And this is what I was looking for. And, and this this was really a rubber match. So both the two day and the three day are getting Stokes uh, Stoke crosses down. Now the two day obviously getting kicked out of the more bullish, bullish controlled zone. Uh, sorry, we should go back to it right over here. This is what I'm talking about right over here. It's getting rejected from the bullish control zone and then headed south. The three day not even allowed to get out of the neutral zone right over here and crossing down. But this is not a confirmed cross. It does, you know, it, it, in the overall context of the price action, the overall context of a market, 
I put a lot of uh, you know I'd, I'd put more weight on that than not, but it's technically not confirmed. The last time that we actually even got a three day dildo uh, stochastic cross to the downside was right over here, literally right over here, which was one of the impetuses for me taking the sixty three hundred trade to the downside. For now, you can see that while well, this chart is just overall bearish, getting the uh, three day dildo uh, death cross right over here and below all major movement averages, never a good sign. Not even able to test the 21 exponential like anytime. I mean, we just haven't even tested it. Uh, I would have really liked to have, t <laughs> you know, I would have really liked to have taken a trade off that. However, Bitcoin really being held by you know even the even the three day three seven seven right over here this solid blue that guy is was governing our our our, um, our lower highs essentially going on along here M formation M is for murder but uh, again doesn't mean you can't have a nice a nice stab back up test the ten simple and then end down this is another three a new fresh three day dildo so that's another it's got like three whole days in its little dildo life to do all sorts of wacky shit before it ends anyways uh, do we have any other indications? on our on our indicators <laughs> indications on our indicators great great fucking english crown wow you are moronic anyways uh what do we have right over here well we have a little bit of hidden bearish divergence on this point and this point on the rsi still trying to get above the uh the exponential adx dmi actually the adx is signaling a, a another trend beginning once again and it's, it's the same thing as a two-day right the dmi minus is a dominant trend but this is i, I want to see conviction in the market not this hesitation um, going back to the two-day right over here, I did, I did, did, ugh, did the last two-day uh, tick below and confirm below the exponential on the RSI? Yes, it did. Again, two-day dildo, uh, hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point right over here. And I believe that we are still we still likely to play out play that out some more with a test back down to the lower end of this bearishly controlled zone. So again, the waiting game continues. Higher time frames uh, weekly will be ending tomorrow. Nothing's changed here. Just consolidation week, which is you know kind of likely after you have a nice bearish engulfing dildo, you usually get a consolidation and then continuation of trend if you don't get it on the you know on the week of essentially. So you know engulfing bear, bearish engulfing dildos or bullish engulfing dildos for that matter. It extremely likely to get followed up with something in that direction as well. Just d doesn't have to be like literally the next one, right? So when you look at this guy right over here and you look at the volume and you look at the reaction off the 10 simple mood average, it does look pretty readily visible, uh, readily available to me that we are respecting this guy and it's likely to, uh, you know, I'm always going to go with the downside when we're in a downtrend. The trend has been down. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend and the trend has been down for the last literally over a year. I think, I think best seen on a weekly perhaps actually, it's just a lot easier to see. Um, you can see all major movement averages are starting to migrate even on the weekly below that critical 6,000 level. In fact, I do believe that, yeah, the 55 is, is, uh, is about 15 bucks above 6,000 right now. So again, these things are not good. Why are they not good? Because Overall, I am bearish. I am, or at least I'm going to be very skeptical of a bull market starting as long as Bitcoin is below 6,000. Of course, there's going to be indications beforehand. A weekly dollar both opening and closing above the 200 exponential right over here. I'd probably really start to drastically change what I'm saying overall. Um, but uh, but but hey, six thousand would be you know your former consolidation uh, of that uh, of that former phase leading into this more aggressive phase. This you know whatever phase you want to call it. Like if you're that. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Won't get into it. Um, people just making up their own their own technical analysis now. Anyways, uh, you know, from a more traditional stance, if you do get back above this area right over here, the six thousand area, then that would be okay. Well, I have no more no more business being bearish. So when, with that in mind, and looking at all these major movement averages kind of migrate down there, especially on the, on higher time frames like a weekly. Well, that just means that there's going to be more and more shit to get through on the upside, essentially. So there you go. Um, let's go down to the lower time frames now and kind of dig this guy out. And actually, before we do that, um, before we do that, I do want to do something a little bit more fun. Let's go to the inverted Hagen rechart. The moon nachato. We have a moon nachato on the weekery. And as you can see right over here, uh, it actually looks pretty good. It actually looks pretty fucking bullish on a weekly. Don't. Uh, that's pretty. That's not bad. Not bad, man. Higher lows, higher highs. Not bad. Not bad. We might even be going higher, bro. Anyways, uh, you do see the 10 simple just, you know, slowly but surely making its way, but, you know, making its way there. And let's just see. I'm, I'm just curious what these guys are going to say. Yeah, basically what you'd look at for a nice trendy move. 
anyways, um, let's go down to a daily because that's where uh, that's where I actually want to show something I think is unique. Uh, and especially for Finex, by the way, you don't see this on the other exchanges. Uh, you only see this on Finex, but you do see a very obvious and very uh, well-defined uh, triangular consolidation right over here. In fact, inside this triangle, in this part portion right over here, you actually do have a cup and handle is what it looks like to me. Coming all the way down into here, low volume hang at the low, bounce uh, or bounce back up to to your right uh, uh, side handle. And there's your uh, there's your consolidation in the form of a symmetrical triangle. Typically you get, you know, some sort of like a falling wedge or or, or rising or sorry, a falling channel. And this time, uh, symmetrical triangle. Anyways, you can make a measure move on this baby. Where would this be pointing towards? It would actually be pointing towards where is it where is it uh right around here three thousand but this is on finex right so finex trades a little bit differently it trades about a hundred bucks higher than uh than, than other spot staff who exchanges a little bit less now actually uh currently finex is 3700 at this time of 9 18 a.m helsinki time on january 19th 2019 <laughs> january 19th 2019 luna peanut butter tone tone why'd you shave your hair you know I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, um, so my point is, is that you know, if you were to make a relation to this with the other spot exchanges, that would, that would suggest somewhere around twenty nine hundred. Do I see that myself? I think what would be more likely that if you if, if Bitcoin actually did break this area right here, it'd probably just be stopped right at its former lows, right at this uh, 30 to 50 ish area right over here. Um, I think this is going to be better seen on perhaps uh, our spot exchanges right over here. Let's go down to GDAX. Let's do this and let's actually go down to the lower time frames and just and really plot this guy out and get into the deep nitty gritty of this. OK, alrighty. So this metric triangle right over here. Uh, is still very much in play, right? This guy is still very much in play. Nice volume pictures on it, and we had a resolution of it right over here on the break of about 38, uh, 3820, 3850, which is why this is in play as long as we are below that area, just to be clear. Um, some people were asking me about that the other night, and I uh, just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So yeah, as long as we're below this area right over here, this symmetrical triangle is very much in play, and that means that the measure move on it is very much in play still, very much. Uh, you go right over here, and that that would be pointing us all the way down and suggesting price action down to the form lows of 3250. So I'd, I'd really put that on the radar first things first um, before what we just looked at on Finex. I did want to show that because I'm sure there's probably other people talking about it. I think, you know, when you're talking about big areas like this, first things first, it, simplify and especially pay attention to the higher levels. And uh, not only do we have this, this former horizontal support coming in from basically our current low right now, which is also a historical level, uh, going all the way back right over here to this area. Yes, this major spike down. This is one of the times that China banned Bitcoin. Banned Bitcoin. <laughs> it's a bad <laughs> or <laughs> terrible accent. Sorry, it just sounds probably racist. I apologize. Um, <laughs> if I need to tell you that I'm not racist, then <sighs> it's too much work, man. You already fucking know that. Uh, but also, not only that, in, in that area is a very important thing as well. Weekly right over here. Weekly uh, 200 simple moon averages coming in. Hey, stop that. I don't want the 11. It's just a silly number. It's just a random number. It's too much different than 10. And I just need to blow on my uh, keyboard. <sighs> Got some chicken tendies all over them. Anyways, uh, you can see the 200 simple on the weekly is coming in right around that 50, uh, sorry, 3250 ish area as well. So if and when Bitcoin actually does get down there, which I do believe it will, I don't believe that we've actually seen the lows, but more importantly, if and when it does get down there, I don't want to be bearish at that level. You're going to see a lot of people probably get aggressively bearish. A lot of people are very, very bearish already uh, from what I've seen, like from YouTube titles and shit, which I do believe Bitcoin is going lower as well. But it's going to be just like, you know, the geniuses at 6,000 telling you, oh, shit, we're going down to 5,000 or 4,000 right now today. No, it take you know it takes its time, especially in these areas right over here. Remember, Bitcoin just had a fifty percent drop, uh, leading us into this area. And overall, you know there are a lot of similarities between this guy and this guy right over here from the 2014-2015 market cycle. Again, market cycle is the reason why this is even relevant, is because assets over a long period of time typically have a similar a similar um, uh, signature, essentially, in the way that they play out their market cycles. Why is this? Because essentially human psychology is what governs price action because, well, it's humans trading. It's not necessarily that we're looking at a chart of Bitcoin. We're actually looking at a chart of Bitcoin with relation to human psychology, interpreting it, which is just around about saying that we're looking at a chart of Bitcoin. So... <laughs> 
what is life? Where are we? <laughs> um, anyways, so my point is, is that over different assets, uh, different asset classes, whether, you know, all the ones that I've, that, uh, that I've looked at myself, commodities, Forex, um, uh, equity options, which is where I come from. And uh, of course, managing net money. Well, you do have these very similar market cycles in the way that an asset will play out, it, play it out. Now, all of those asset classes, sorry, all of those different genres do kind of play out the market cycles in the general principle ways. And then the, and then the specific asset will have like its own kind of unique interpretation of that. It's like, think of it as like a personality, if you will. So we, so we basically have, uh, we basically have an, an identity right over here of how Bitcoin likes to play out it, its market cycles. And that's why this is relevant over here. Again, human psychology, not changed ever since we became anatomically modern homo sapiens, billions, not billions, but you know, it's like, it was a long time ago, far, far too long for anyone to, to get out of conditioning that, that, uh, that is that deep. Anyways, uh, right over here, this air, this area, extremely similar to this area right over here. Why is this relevant? Well, because again, <sighs> look at the volume, look at the volume in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. Just as an aside, when we actually do, if and when we actually do see the more violent wave capitulation, I want to see volume similar to what you did in your parabolic cycle right over here. That's what I'm looking for. Just like right over here, that this this volume is similar to what you did right over here in your parabolic cycle. Now, this guy right over here in relation to this guy right over here, it looks extremely similar to this guy in relation to this guy right over here. Not only that, but even the dump leading us into this area is very similar. Actually, we uh, Bitcoin was putting in a, whoops, let's just... God damn it, man. Just so sloppy today. Sorry about that, guys. Probably uh, probably a little bit slow myself today. Anyways, uh, you even had a, a, a descending triangle right over here, which if you remember, Bitcoin at 6,000 did have a descending triangle leading into this area. Uh, taking a taking a percentage drawdown, it was about a 53.5% drop be from that area to that area. If we were to do the same thing right over here, it would be, oh my God, a 52% drop. Again, uh, it does, you know, that is not the end all be all of this, but it is, you know, it is interesting to do now. Now, actually the bump up from that, from that low was about 24, 25%, whatever it might be, you know, it's, it's about the same at that area and the bump up from this area right over here, you know, about the same, about 22, you know, mid twenties essentially. So in the way that Bitcoin likes to play out its mark cycles to kind of bring this full circle, these look extremely similar to each other. Not only that, but also from a completely unique look at this completely unique stance on the MBT signal again. Uh, this is the, the the network value to transactions, and this is actually endorsed by Willy Woo himself, the maker of the MVT signal. So we're just going to put this on. This only works on a daily. It does not work on a weekly. So do not be swayed by that. The weekly is going to mislead you. It does not work with this with the way that the moving averages are set up on this guy. Anyways, daily over here. Um, let's just let's just scroll back to that area. And if you're not familiar with the MBT signal, it is the network value divided by the daily transaction value. So that is completely unique and divorced from our other indicators essentially you know it's not going to be related to price volume and time it's related to shit that's like actually going on in the network so let's just zoom in on this area from 2014 right this area right over here and let's go see what the mbt reading was on this guy the mbt reading on this guy was like right around here right around like 90 ish area well if i put a nice horizontal there and we measure it out where are we where are we currently sitting right now oh my god right fucking there very very similar and very very eerily uh eerily kind of scary in a way Anyways, um, taking all these guys off and just and just even talking about this guy for a second, you know, another another one of the big reasons why I do not believe Bitcoin has reached its low amongst other things, uh, you know, namely like the very corrective price action, the volume that we're seeing down around here, the percentage reaction, the overall market feeling, the market dynamics with the longs versus shorts, which we'll go over in just a second, but also the MBT signal not giving you the bottoming signal as well, which MBT signal had calls, has called every major top and every major bottom perfectly throughout Bitcoin's history. That doesn't necessarily mean that every top and bottom that it calls is like the highest that it goes ever. Or, or, or anything like that. No, that's the wrong way to be interpreting it. But it does tell, it does let you know when like major pivot points are being put in on the market. For example, you have this red area right over here, right? That is your 20,000 high. Then you have this green area right over here. That was your 6,000 low. Not bad. If you would have just traded that, probably doing pretty damn good. Uh, right over here, you know, you, you have you have plenty of reds up into this area. These are critical zones. Uh, and now it's just letting you know that this is essentially, these were those were all tops, local tops. Um, and, uh, and and eventually did lead on downwards, as I'm sure you already know. Uh, this guy over here called the top right, uh, right on this, uh, uh, pr pretty much perfectly on this, called the bottom on this guy pretty much perfectly, called the bottom on this guy pretty much perfectly. 
and called the bottom in 2014, 2015 perfectly. And as you just saw as of uh, a couple, uh, like a minute ago, well, we are nowhere near that bottoming form, uh, signature on the MBT signal. So again, you know, I'm essentially bearish uh, in looking to, looking to be a short player um, as long as Bitcoin is doing three things. One, lower highs and lower lows on the daily, I'm gonna be fucking bearish off that. Two, if it's opening and closing weekly dildos below the 200 simple moving average, or sorry, 200 exponential moving average, this purple line right over here at 4150, still fucking bearish. And again, that is opening and closing. But if Bitcoin were to open and close a weekly dildo above that area, I'd really drastically change my tune. Like uh, I would, I'd probably even take a little bit of a starter position to the long side, just as a precaution, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and the third and final and most important is what we talked about before. If Bitcoin could get back above uh, this 6,000 area, a breakdown from the former cycle, which if you were looking at the MBT, so that's almost was a bubble in and of itself. Interestingly enough, when you do kind of put the pieces together, well, that would be at the point where, I, where I'd have no interest in, in looking for shorts anytime soon, at least from a technical, technical analysis standpoint. Um, as it stands right now, Bitcoin has done none of those things. So I will continue to be looking to be a short player. Although right now, not really not really having any positions myself because just because I'm looking for shorts doesn't mean I, you know, I short every little last thing. Now, when we are looking at this guy, once again, bringing this uh, GDAX uh, chart up, you know, obviously this symmetrical triangle, pretty damn easy to to define you have the very you have all the signatures of of a symmetric triangle you have that nice fall off in volume and then burst it back up once we break it right over here um and but now when bitcoin is stuck at this area right over here we do have something new going on right we do have something new going on and what is what is that new thing going on well or do we have sorry the question is do we have something new going on and I would say until you actually get a full on confirmation of of getting back above, you know, 3850, I would not I would not say that again. This symmetrical triangle right over here does take precedence over this guy right over here. However, this guy right over here is being quite stout and at, and I'm sure last night when we were plotting it like this, this 4-hour total time frame, um as, as some sort of a triangle uh, triangle consolidation well that actually technically did break out to the downside and you can see that we have just popped back and retested it is that a full-on breakdown though no it's not a confirmation of breakdown i need to see volume that is similar to what got you into this formation right over here i know a lot of people are looking at this as a diamond bottom diamond diamond bottom diamond tops are not something that i see very often especially in cryptocurrency land and they're one of those patterns that seems to get painted a lot as well as well as like fractals and never mind won't get into it um but overall what i can say and to make this a little bit easier and this is really the crux of of how i do my analysis and like how i actually trade i'm just trying I'm, I'm just represented right now what a lot of other people are looking at uh is basically this and it's basically is pretty fucking simple actually i would say here's your horizontals i don't like diagonals i fucking hate diagonals i'm a diagonal racist along with wedges they can all go fuck themselves back of the bus bitches Anyways, uh, horizontal right over here, 38, uh, sorry, 36.80, dyslexic this morning as well. Um, if Bitcoin gets back above there, don't really see anything stopping you from about 3,800-ish area. Uh, that's the next. That's kind of the next cluster of resistance. And of course, still have to deal with 3,850 above that. But if Bitcoin can get back above 3,850, then it's time to reconsider. I don't think that there'd be anything stopping you from about 4,000 at that point. But as you can see, it's a slow trudge to the upside. That's why trading to the upside in an overall down market is very tricky and very dangerous and typically it's not worth the it's not worth the headache in in, in my in my opinion again that's an opinion thing that's an opinion thing you know i you know you yeah uh, pe other people might not agree with that and and you can not agree with me and still make money and still you know it's i think it'd just be a lot more work to trade to the upside right now uh, so to me the real the real uh the real art in this next phase of what we're doing right now in this consolidation is to find the next kind of local top essentially are we going to be topping right over here? Well, again, if we do look at it in the very low time frames, you could maybe say that. But, uh, you know, until until you actually break here, and more importantly, until you actually fully break 35, 30, it's, it's, it's well and far away, really. And you, we've had so many wicks down around here. It's very difficult to actually you know, get a confirmation on this guy without, I mean, it's, it's very, it's very difficult to get a confirmation on this guy on something that to me actually matters, which, you know, of course this is, this is a personal preference type thing, but Hey, there you go. 
Um, maybe you could put one right here and make the decision at 3580. I think that's what I was saying last night. Like if Bitcoin could close a two hour dildo below 3580, then I'm, then, uh, then I'm gearing up for some downside. You can make a mesh move on this baby. Uh, it is consolidation and just, you know, just as an aside, a lot of the times you can just do it like this, uh, breaking it, breaking it up to the upside. Where's the next resistance around 3850 actually, or I mean, it depends how you kind of represent this. I would say somewhere in this range, 30, 3800 to 3850, uh, if it breaks the upside, if it breaks to the downside, um, um, then we do have it pointing down around here to about 3350-ish area, somewhere somewhere around this area. We do have a nice horizontal around there as well. So overall, a little bit of patience here. Well, it's becoming a lot of bit of patience because I'm sure people have been waiting for like the last week for resolution on this bitch. Um, is gonna is you know is, is gonna likely do you well. We do have a few things to look at uh, at the underlying market dynamics. We'll get into that in just a second, but I do want to throw a fib on this before we get to that. And let's see. Yeah, you can see from the fibs right over here, it's actually it's actually lining up pretty damn well with a lot of these areas. So we're actually testing the 0.5 and holding on to the 618 now there's something interesting to be aware of on this guy as well so on this first massive jump up over here the fibonacci retracement on that guy did actually perfectly touch back down to the 618 and typically when you pop back to, down to the 618 the bots and the algorithms will will just buy it just by the nature of their programming they don't they don't give a fuck they just will buy because they know that probably other bots are buying it as well just you know if, if you don't want to get in like super airy fairy like crystal ball type thinking if they're doing that, typically their target on the first pass is going to be the 236 FIB right over here. That's exactly what you saw from here to here. Not bad. If you took that trade, well, congratulations. You only had to wait about three weeks for it. Not bad. Anyways, um, after that happened, the 236 gets sold and it actually gets picked back up at the, at the 618. Now, when that happens, typically speaking, it's going to actually have a target for the people who picked it up at the 618 to sell the, the, the 382. You can see right now that Bitcoin has not made it back around there. Doesn't mean that it can't. Again, these things can certainly take their time no doubt about that but it, that is also why i'm hesitant here to just be blindly short right at this region right at this level because really it's almost in a way going against statistics in my mind um i'd rather see a full-on break uh if i am going to enter into a short i am short i am basically uncovered on my 6300 short but i don't really consider that there's a question about that last night as well i don't consider that like an open like it is an open position but i don't i don't consider it like a scalp where i'd be interested in in, in even caring about a move right over here i'm more interested in, in the greater trend i want to see higher highs essentially um but uh but yeah as you can see if 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 this is going to top at the 0.5 more importantly then this would be interpreted as majorly bearish majorly bearish because if the 0.5 is going to be the selling it's is going to be the selling uh target for the more aggressive bots for the more um, and what would be the more powerful bots as this is like a game think of it as like a string being pulled you know it's like slowly getting ground down right well that would that would very likely incite a test of the 3250 area relatively fast relatively fast so again let's go check out the underlying market dynamics this is a longs and shorts on phoenix and we actually do have something to be aware of right now the shorts funny rate is at pretty much a zero i mean it's literally zero on the charts right here i'm, I'm guessing that is probably like not actually zero but <laughs> but but the funny rates on the longs have actually doubled in the last day and and tripled in the last two days so going all the way up to 0.021 percent which is again not a death sense that is not that high 0.05 percent is where things start to get to the higher side you you will start to pay size just to hold like a million dollar position per day but looking at this guy and then also making a relation between the actual total longs which is 31 and a half thousand versus the total shorts a little bit above 22,000 with 4,000 of those hedged so we really have about 18,000 versus 31 and a half thousand open longs well that is concerning as well because when you are coming out of like if you were actually to put in a major low, you'd want it the opposite, really. You'd want like 31,000 shorts versus 20,000 longs. That would be a beautiful setup for for an ultimate low again and put in. But if we look at it on the charts right over here, you can see on the short, uh, especially on the shorts chart, there's something of great interest, right? Anytime that Bitcoin gets down to like these low 20,000 numbers, it does typically line up with a major dump this was your january dump and remember bitcoin at that point in time was was worth way more so you didn't need as many coins short so obviously it's going to be you know it's going to be like a drastic change from this guy over here to this guy over here when bitcoin's you know in trading on the threes rather than like you know teens of 
tens of thousands. <laughs> um, but but yeah, anytime it gets to like these critical lows, especially in more recently, right around here, this was your August dump. This was your uh, November break of 6,000 dump. And now we're once again in this area. I know people are drawing, you know, trend lines on this. You can't really do that when it comes to longs and short start. You can't do trend lines. You can't do fucking divergences. You can't do moving averages. They don't work on something like this. It's very deceiving. And they're, uh, probably people are just naive to the fact. But it's a... It's a to go into it for just a second, it's 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 a very incomplete piece of the whole, right? This when we're even looking at the margin positions to begin with on just Finex, does that mean all that much? No, this is like a secondary or tertiary type thing to even be aware of. But it is interesting to me right now when people start doing like fucking Elliot waves on the shit. That's when all hell is broken loose. Or maybe I'm just missing something. But again, this is you know it's 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 a, it's a it's one piece of the whole of a very small piece of the overall pie. So understand that sort of thing as not to be relevant. And it's not like you can trade the shorts. You can't trade the shorts, and you just like you can't trade the longs chart. So to make a relation between those two things is asinine. It's not right. It's not, it's quite literally not right. Anyways, um, the point is, is that it's back down around this critical zone where we kind of line up with major dumps, historically speaking. So it's quite, it's not quite there uh, from prior times, but it is certainly on the radar. That's my point. Um, okay, so let's get back on over to Mr. Bitcoins. Did we cover up the lower time frames enough? I, I guess we should go through the lower time frame oscillators, although on a weekend, on weekends, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what they say. Um, but uh, but four-hour stokes are down, but they are losing momentum. To be fair, they are losing. They are they uh, they look like they could cross up with just a little bit of an uptick. Um, RSI neutral, Jewel neutral, everything new, uh, everything neutral. It, again, these are it's not even worth it to look at it on a lower time frame here. Let's go look at Mr. Buterol. That's going to be a little bit more helpful. Or sorry, before that, let's go look at GBTC. GBTC, as we saw last night, uh, playing rope it up on the sports once again, still looks weak in the formation of a rising channel, technically a bear flag which does have a target all the way down to about, I don't know, it was like $2.50, all the way down around here to this form of support. Oh, you got to love it when shit matches up like that. Um, but just because it's in a bear flag doesn't mean it's going to break anytime soon. You know, it can certainly have another rally off this support and fill the gap right over here, which would be really nice. It'd probably equal equate to Bitcoin around that 3,800 level that we spoke about before. And that would likely be your, you know, uh, and that'd likely be your turning point. That'd be really, really great to, you know, just force a lot of people out of, uh, out of the wrong positions. And that's, you know, that's fucking markets at their best. But of course, GBTC does not trade over the weekend. So with America on holiday on Monday, well, <laughs> Well, 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 then that means that they're just not, you know, we're not we're going to have data on this until Tuesday, right? So last we saw basically holding up above this support right over here again does look weak, does not look good by any stretch of the imagination, but again, it could, you know, it could it could stab this area right over here four dollars and 68 cents fill this gap, which would actually make a lot of sense. Again, that would put Bitcoin spot like, you know, 3800 ish area and then probably fall down from there. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards, but uh Again, with a holiday weekend, unlikely to get, you know, any any fun stuff. Uh, let's go over to Mr. Buterol. Or sorry, let's let's go see where CME's closed last night. This is important as well. Closing at uh, 3,600. And again, 3,600 and closing above this lower support right over here if you are looking at this as a triangle. Again, I, I really think that the CME charts are so much easier to read than, uh, than traditional uh, or sorry, not traditional, um, the untraditional, the SAFU exchanges right over here. I mean, if I show you this chart, you'd be like, wow, that looks like shit. If I showed you, uh, if I showed you this chart, you would probably punch me in the face and say, crown, you just gave me eyes, AIDS, but not AIDS from my eyes, like the cancer type. It's bad, man. It's fucking bad. This is bad. That's a massive bearish engulfing dildo with follow through, actually. Um, again, CME's uh, likely to hold some weight, but they won't be. I don't believe that futures trade on a holiday on a holiday day for Amer uh, for Americans. But I I would have to confirm that because I, I don't know that. I I, I don't know that um, off the top of my head for sure. Like for sure, you know, I can't speak with authority on that one. Um, but yeah, you know, same thing for CMEs. You know, you got this. You got you got a very obvious uh, pattern right over here. Breaks to the upside. Oh, where are you looking at? About thirty eight hundred. If it breaks to the downside. Oh, where are you looking at? About thirty four hundred. Nice. And remember, CME price is going to be a little bit different than spot, but uh, overall, the general shape is uh, is relevant. Uh, buterol over here. Buterol. 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 Uh, same thing over here as Bitcoin. You know, 
if you're looking at this as a four hour yesterday, technically you did have a break. We are coming back and actually retesting this area right now, it looks like, uh, or have retested it. That's also the 21 exponential moving average. And more importantly for me, uh, as long as you have the four hour dildo death cross right over here, which has been tested one, two, three uh, times, rejected all three times, and then down, you know, as long as you're below the 21 exponential, I do play this to the downside and actually do take trades off that. If I were trading this, I'm not trading it because I don't trade alts. Um, but uh, but hey, if you are trading that, that's that's essentially what I'd be thinking right over there. You're you're right at the point five. And in fact, what's better about Buterol and what I like uh, like more about Buterol's chart is that one, you have a very obvious pattern. You have this nice head and shoulders reversal pattern. You have the right shape. You have the right you you have the right uh, price action characteristics. You have the right volume characteristics. Characteristics. You have a well defined neckline right at the six one eight Fibonacci retracement. And just like we had that conversation with Mr. Bitcoin, you know, on that first pass of the six one eight, you know, the two three six gets sold. Well, actually, it gets above the two three six. And then, then pops back down into the 618 and then the the 382 gets picked up right over here that makes things a lot more easy um that makes things a lot more easy because it would actually make a lot more sense on mr butyrol's stretch which could be running the market right now and i actually do believe that it probably is running the market why do i say that because it was the one that led the market up it had one of the best gains of it out of anything and then it led the market down putting in this nice beautiful wyckoff type right top right over here so i am i am bearish on mr buterol uh, essentially as long as you're below you know 144 and a half but but more aggressively as long as you're essentially respecting this four hour dildo death cross right over here and uh and below all major moving averages especially the 21 that is what I'm looking for. Um, you can see the volume pictures on this guy is starting to really tail off. You can see this nice orderly drop off in volume, which typically does let you know that this pattern is going to be resolved relatively soon. Just because it's head and shoulders, just because everything looks perfectly in place does not mean it's 100% going to play out. You've, I've definitely seen ones that I've not played on in, in the past, no doubt about that, especially in cryptocurrency land. But um, but, uh, but, but more importantly, the way, the way that I play patterns and the way that, you know, technically you're supposed to play patterns, although I don't really like patterns to begin with is if you break, uh, the neckline right over here, 117 on volume, then measured move time, baby, going all the way down to exactly $69. Anyways, uh, that probably does it for Mr. Buterol three day. I uh, just want to check out the three day right over here. Yeah. Three day looks like a rejection, um, on the last one, but still not, not much. What about uh, three day Stokes? Yeah, three day Stokes are crossed down. Fair enough. All right, that I think that's that's all I really want to see on there. Uh, do we want to look at? Let's look at Mr. Ripple's nipples. Thirty two cents right over here. Thirty two cents again. Three day dollar death cross. As long as you're below the twenty one, play to the downside. That's that's really all there is to do. And even more aggressively, as long as you're below thirty five cents or thirty four and a half cents, still bearish. Uh, twenty eight cents kind of the next support if this thing does want to break down probably going to go off of whatever mr buterol and uh the king like or the king bitcoin do uh, mrs litecoin irrelevant um <laughs> people are not going to like that one but we can go over to it uh yeah if 28 cents breaks and that's pretty fucking bad um stellar stellar rumens baby uh stellar lumens over here again still below this 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 11 cent region hard hard chart to love uh, got that nice M formation, lower highs being given by this three day little death cross fresh broke the consolidation first gave you a bull trap right over here. Then quick move to the downside after that, that was a big fucking signal. Uh, so yeah, again, I think that, I think that these, that, that this phase of the market cycle is going to take a long time. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I do believe that it breaks onto the downside and let's just go talk about, uh, Bitcoin. You know, I guess, I guess we can get into this right now. Let's just talk about this. I don't want to go in, into too much depth because I will go into much more detail tomorrow during tomorrow's long-term analysis, uh, for Mr. Bitcoin. But if the 3,200 uh, support breaks, which again, I do believe that it breaks, but not anytime soon, <laughs> not anytime soon. Um, then I'd be looking for uh, I'd be looking for this next blue box territory down around here. Now, of course, there are targets below that 1850 and then uh, 1100, 1300. But the way that I do technical analysis, it's one thing at a time. I'll never say Bitcoin is definitely going to 1000 or Bitcoin's definitely going to 20,000 tomorrow. It's just not right. There's things in the way beforehand. And this is the difference between someone who just, you know, who might know a few things from Investopedia or and someone who actually trades as a living. And essentially, you can't you can't do the reason why you can't do that is because you won't it's hard to make money doing that that's that's why um so yes if 3250 breaks and then, then i do start looking towards this 2300 to 2600 level right over here this blue box which is your 886 Fibonacci retracement 
which is actually where you did bottom out in 2014, just saying. We also do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming in right around this area. And if we put on the volume profile, we have some nice thick AF nodes coming in right around this area. Actually, the peanuts of Christian, if I zoom it in just enough right here, but that's going to obviously not be it. You will notice that the, that the most thick nodes of them all, uh, mirror, mirror on the wall, uh, coming in down around here at around 1100-ish area. Uh, not only that, if we go over here to an exchange that, actually, or sorry, the BLX index, which actually has enough price action history to go through, the 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 blue 377 weekly is coming in right around 2600. Love that. That is something that I put a significant amount of weight on in traditional markets, and if it does come into play in Bitcoin land, well, that would make a lot of sense and really just be really, 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 really nice. Um, what else? Uh, what else we have pointing down around there? Yeah, that that uh, that that formation that we were looking at on the GDAX charts right over here. This is just basically forming what? It's, it's basically forming a massive descending triangle, right? So if we are forming a descending triangle, well, then we can make a measure move off this baby and per, uh, perhaps put that to the downside right over there. Where would that line up with? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is that 2300? That's 2300. Wow. It's like sometimes technical analysis. It, it kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, again, I'm making an assumption there. We do... We do have one, two touches for the bottom support trend line. We definitely have three touches to the upper trend line. Um, so essentially, as long as, you know, as long as that's in, that's in play, that's 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 what I'll be looking for. Uh, and like I said, there are targets below. But first things first, you know, got to get to got to get through the more obvious ones. Again, when it comes to putting in major market lows, it's not because you had the right fucking line because you your technical analysis told you from this. This happened in the past. It's like, no, it does. It, when it comes down to like getting exact numbers, it's not work, work like that. It's about a big boy with big pockets saying let's press that green button bitch and then price action doesn't return anywhere near there anytime soon i won't go into like what am i looking for capitulate i mean i can just talk about it for a second you know volume reaction and time of reaction going to be the most important things and also mbt so no, i'm going to be looking at that as well and then underlying market dynamics as in the shorts and longs in their relation to each other uh, at those price ranges so We'll go into like actual examples tomorrow, probably. If you don't want to wait for tomorrow, well, just go check out the long-term analysis playlist, uh, the most recent video that I uploaded. Anyways, uh, I think that's probably going to do it for Mr. Bitcoin right over here. Again, in the lower time frames, I, you know, people are going to be representing this as a triangle. Can you do it? Can you not do it? I just think that it's not too helpful right now. It's been it's been snaking around too much to the point where I don't really, you know, I, I'd rather I'd rather be aware of the higher levels, especially on a weekend time frame. How many times has there been like a been like a f phenomenal wick on a weekend that's just gotten you out of a great position, only to return back to you know your entry and then go in your direction, you know, tenfold when the when the actual trading week starts, probably a lot. Um, so that's why I don't like trading uh, weekend bullshit. But hey, if Bitcoin does close above thirty six eighty, just this former high right over here, very 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 likely that that actually will be a legitimate breakout to the thirty eight hundred ish area. Uh, if we if it breaks this horizontal right here thirty five eighty, I'd be I would be confident saying that it's likely it's likely to come back down to about thirty four hundred ish area, low thirty four hundred ish area, but but officially speaking, you'd want to break this lower block down around here, around 3520. But that's probably not too helpful. And I don't think that that's necessarily necessary if that's not redundant enough because you really don't have this lower block here for a second. All the other ones are just wicks. So if price action does start to break this area, that should likely do it. But uh, market doesn't operate in shoulds. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. Um, overall, Lower highs, lower lows. Nothing's changed on the higher time frames. Bitcoin can break above four thousand. Maybe we have, we might have some new to look at from a higher time frame perspective. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. Hope hope you're having a beautiful um, Saturday. Hope you're having the best Saturday possible. I'll be back on likely tomorrow, unless there's like some sort of a major change, shift in direction uh, during today Saturday. And I look forward to seeing you then. If not, well, I wish you a great day. Anyways, so take care and uh, see you soon.